Welcome to the Create with Katrina Julia show by Fit Life Creation, where we talk all the things on wellness, faith, marketing, business, and travel to create a life and business you love. I've been there, friend. I've walked from fear to faith, self-hate to love, corporate to calling, and bondage to freedom, along with transformation in every area of my life. I'm right here with you, walking along on my own path to creating. So tune in so that you learn how to create a life and business you love, hands-on. Let's create it. Welcome back to the show, and it's halftime 2023 celebrations and shifting the shit. So this episode is weeks in the making. I had fully intended to do it in July, but between transitions, between life and projects and shifting to Mexico right now, it had shifted and that is okay. And I'm giving myself all the grace, but buckle up because this episode and the intention behind it is so that you assess the first half of 2023 or any year and decide how you are going to be, do, and have for the rest of the year on a daily basis. And if you've been tuning into the show, you know I've been talking about my phrase for the year. I am divinely disciplined. Let me repeat that. I am divinely disciplined. I have been learning, observing, shifting so much this year and really coming face to face with every single area of my life and where there is lack, where there is doubt, where there are lies as far as how I see myself and how that impacts the action. And that is what I truly want you to get from this episode. I really want you to dive deep on the first part of the year. And we are going to celebrate with what has worked and reflections on what's happened the first half of the year. Um, I'm also going to point you to my creator confessions that um, I record monthly and the July creator confessions will be coming up. I'll be sharing that I am now traveling full time and I am in Playa del Carmen right now. The faith that I'm having for the main focuses in creating a lifestyle brand and what that looks like as I shift from a creator to a CEO. And as you approach this episode, you decide how you want to pause, where you want to take notes. And that's the thing, you guys, I want to empower you. Anything you listen to, whether it's in real life or in person, sometimes you get to hit pause take notes and really tune into your own divine downloads, your own thoughts, your own reflections. And sometimes we need to silence other voices so we can really hear our own. Repeat that. Sometimes we need to silence other voices so that we hear our own. This is coming from a former people please aholic. So I get it. You don't have to listen to this whole episode in one shot. You don't have to listen to it straight through. You can hit pause, take journal notes, reflections, actions, whatever it is. Like this is your time. And the way that I want you to think about also as you assess the, the year um, so far and moving forward is I want you to assess your faith. Number one, I want you to assess your belief in looking back in the last, you know, half of a year or seven, eight months, you know, we're at August 3rd right now. And then also let your mind, you know, take you as you reflect on even past years. Because as I started to, one of the things as I went through therapy and I've gone through therapy three times and I talk about this 
in a past recent episode and blog post, it's okay to not be okay. And I share, you know, insights into my own journeys with therapy, with EMDR, eye movement, desensitization, resonance, if I'm saying it correctly, if I'm not, forgive me, EFT, emotional freedom technique. And as I looked back on the themes of my life, you know, in seven year increments and shifting the the themes of my transformation, shifting from self-hate to love, from devaluing to purity, from corporate to calling, from pain to purpose, bondage to freedom, lies to love, and fear to faith. And those themes don't ever stop because I'm alive (laughs) and I refuse to accept the status quo as that's it. Or I refuse to accept as there is one way to live. The second point I want you to really focus in on and hone in on is vision and not just vision from envisioning and having visualization exercises, but writing down a vision and making it plain. The word says, and in scripture, it says without vision, the people perish. And I can tell you this also firsthand because I remember being in middle school and high school and in college and having an avid, avid vision and all those things came to pass. And yes, that I dealt with some shit across the way. Some of you have heard me talk about, you know, whether it's been years of instability and how that reflected and showed up in my mind, in my weight, in my health, in my money, in my relationships, in my friendships, in life. And then also going through, you know, in alignment with that and how I viewed myself and my identity and my worth going through an abusive relationship, losing a best friend to cancer and how that still affects me today because Janelle was like a sister. She was a sister. I I always say family is your blood family, but then your friends are your chosen family. So writing a vision, you know, so I wrote avidly a vision when I was in high school and college and so much of that centered around performance and accomplishment and external goals. But when I, or and when I woke up in a sense in my early thirties, I realized, wait a minute, I hadn't written down a vision again after I achieved all of that. So yes, I was still achieving and moving and growing, but it's very different when you have something programmed in your GPS that is calling you. And when I started walking through my transformation with Herbalife Nutrition, with the community, with my weight, it was like I could see again. I got so crystal clear on my vision and intention more and more and more of how I wanted to feel, how I wanted others to feel, how I wanted to be free and how I desired to be free in all forms, freedom of time, of expression, of community, of location and financial freedom. And I'm so grateful to say with alignment and intention and direction, I've achieved freedom and all of those. And I'm other than I'm still walking out community freedom and financial freedom. I'm not there yet. But the thing is, you guys, once again, those forms of freedom is also a daily journey because if I'm not intentional about those freedoms and choosing those freedoms, I can easily slip back into prior tendencies. And I believe it's all about rewiring our neural pathways. So how do I write down visions? I journal. I um, also use tools like Live Plan, L-I-V-E Plan. That's in my 75 plus tools in the link in bio. I use tools like ClickUp. That's also in the 75 plus tools to set up, you know, my priorities, my three top priorities on a quarterly, on a monthly, on a weekly basis. And then I take action. Sometimes that action is uh, aligned and I'm clear. Like I've, you know, taken quote unquote time off to work on my business and not 
in just in my business, but sometimes those are moments of inspiration and divine downloads and inspired action that comes to me in the midst of silence, in the midst of prayer, in the midst of walking, in the midst of taking aligned action. And then another inspiration hits me. And so that is what I want you to think about as you think about this four pronged approach. And then last, but definitely not least, because this is like a circle, it continues track progress, track progress. Don't just focus on the outcome. Like many of us, I used to be so focused on the outcome, on the end result and not allow myself to be and feel and enjoy in the journey. And what I've learned, especially these last seven plus years, most of all, it it is about the daily gratitude, the daily discipline, the daily joy, the daily love. Because if we don't do that daily, when we quote unquote arrive at the outcome, we dismiss that too. And that was me. When I reached those outcomes, in my late 20s and then early 30s, it was like, okay, cool. And then I really didn't take time to fully celebrate our process or even, even ask myself if that, if that was what I wanted all along. Or if I had allowed culture, other people's voices, other people's opinions to dictate the decisions I had made when they weren't even really truly my own or my soul's desire. So to repeat that four-based approach as we dive into several things, number one, assess faith. Number two, write the vision down. Number three, take action. Number four, track progress. One more point I want to make on vision that just came to me is sometimes you will feel fully aligned in acting out and taking aligned action to the vision, but sometimes you won't. And sometimes you'll feel crystal clear and sometimes you won't. And those are in those moments. It's the courage to act in spite of, and to reflect and, or act. And it's almost like trying on the way I look at it is it's like trying on, you know, a outfit, right. For us ladies or trying on, you know, a pair of jeans or trying on a pair of shoes. Because sometimes we don't know. It's like, okay, am I moving in this direction? Is this direct the direction I want to go? How does this feel? And then it's also assessing and being real with yourself. It's like, okay, it's like a baby learning to walk, right? Let me not say no too quickly. Let me walk it out. Let me try. Let me see if actually I do love this, whether it's a way of being, whether it's a way of moving, whether it's a workout, whether it's a new business model, whether it's, you know, a new friend, whatever it is. And then sometimes it is an immediate, like, no, like I am big. Like if you, those of you that have listened to my faith series, like warrior woman of faith or fear to faith or devaluing to purity or the prayer for our world, you can definitely check those out on the blog and show, you know, I am big on faith and big on discerning. But a lot of times my prayer is, okay, God, is this me or is this you? Like, is my fear interfering? Oh, that's good. That's a, that's a, that just came. Is my, is your fear interfering or is your faith calling you to focus on something else? And one of the things I have also been trying on, so to speak, and increasing my alignment and my calling and decreasing people pleasing is walking away from things that are not a hell yes. Like when we people please so many times we say yes to so many things that are a no, a hell no, or a maybe, or, oh, it's okay. Versus really, really focusing on, okay, is this really a hell yes? Because, and what happens is when we do that, we end up releasing the things or don't have time or space for the things that are a hell yes, or we don't even recognize them because we're so foggy. It's like putting on a pair of glasses that's foggy. So let's get into some of my halftime. So I am celebrating so much this year because I feel like I've already grown so, so much, Uh, but there's also some shit and some shifts. So I'm celebrating, for example, 
January was a big shift from the end of last year. Like I was really feeling in November and December. And a lot of it was I didn't like the weather in Atlanta. I felt it was super gray. It was cold. And some of what I feel our creator and my soul was speaking to me was Katrina. Do not allow your external viewpoints or circumstances to impact your inner circumstances, your inner mood, your inner feeling. Like that's a whole gem, right? Because so many times we can't control certain things in the moment. We can set an intention and change it moving forward, but it doesn't always happen overnight. And one of the things I realized is I already didn't like winners and different things before, really, like for a long period of time. And when I left to travel the world 2020 through 2022, I was exponentially in places that were warm. And so when the the winter came, it dramatically hit me and I started making the intention and direction and decision. I said, wait a minute, I don't need to be in the winter moving forward. Like if it's a trip or it's short term, okay, but I don't have to live somewhere where there is winter. I can go travel. So these are the possibilities. I, I you know, I call these possibilities and letting yourself dream and letting yourself, you know, open up to your desires. So I started realizing, I said, wait a minute, what are my possibilities? My possibilities are I can travel the world again. My possibilities are I can have projects, you know, paid and or press trips in warm places. My possibilities are I can pitch travel brands, real estate brands all around the world to stay in warm places. My possibilities are I don't have to renew my lease and stay in Atlanta through the winter. My possibilities are I can travel and go to Mexico or Central America or South America or other warm places. My possibilities are I can align to platforms like Hello Landing and access their network of 300 plus cities around the United States with fully furnished apartments. My possibilities are I can put my stuff back in storage and donate again. So you see, you know, and this applies, you guys, to everything and anything in life. So those are some of the things that I started to think about again and shift. Then as I looked, you know, and I'm giving you bullet points of things, as I looked in, you know, as January shifted, I redirected my focus to attend different community events like Home Depot Backyard. And you can hear a lot about that in my episode on the Creator Confessions from January and February and Divine Downloads on that episode. So I aligned to, you know, different communities and attended different events and started to immerse myself in communities. I reached out to them to partner on workouts and nutritional, you know, events as well. I started to increase my discipline rapidly. I completed a vision series on YouTube and a mini vision course that's in my summit and my creation club as well that you can access in the link in bio. I implemented creator confessions and creator snapshots on the show, on, you know, email. These are some of the things that are coming to mind, you know, right now as I'm sharing. January through March, I also 10X'd my income compared to last year. I got an incredible project with Google that simply repurposed previous content I had created traveling the world and they paid me for it. I got invited to be part of the YouTube Shorts community with YouTube. Then March through July, well, March, April, May, I experienced some really challenging months. But before I talk about that, some of the things I want to mention in January through March, I increased uh, prayer. I increased attending a faith-based community, both live and um, online with Epic Fab Girl with Live Atlanta, um, and also going in person more and different things. And March through July, I recognized an old pattern. It was kind of like an old friend because now I started to look at it from a different lens. So January through March, I experienced 10X. March through July, it was like a radical shift opposite again. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm repeating 
an old theme. I'm repeating self-sabotage. I'm repeating something. I'm repeating an old habit of feast or famine. And then I started to dig deeper because my soul was ready to dig deeper. I realized, wait a minute. Okay. You've dealt Katrina so much with your identity and so much has cleared from that, from that. But what is this telling you now? And like an objective observer, I realized, I said, wait a minute. I am unearthing new levels of worthiness versus unworthiness or worthiness versus worthlessness. And I talked a lot about that in a recent episode that you can dive deep in that'll help you with your own reflections. Because the more we take responsibility, 100% responsibility for our lives and not just look externally, but look internally, it's asking, okay, how am I allowing or inviting or accepting this? And I realized, wait a minute, this is a pattern that's happened in different ways in the past where I would have abundance and then the opposite. I, you know, and I started realizing, wait a minute, Katrina, why have you been fighting with finances for the majority of your life? And where does that span when I dig deep and go all the way back to childhood? And different, you know, experiences that I had with money and different experiences I witnessed with money around me with my family. And this is not blaming my mom or my dad in any way, shape or form. It's simply recognizing, you know, different feelings, different emotions, different fears, and also giving grace and love and recognizing that our parents and other humans, all humans are doing the best that they have at the moment. And the more we forgive and release, we free ourselves up to be free. And so as I started to dig deep, I reframed some things of I am flowing with finances, like affirmations that I've recorded on my phone that I repeat. I am friends with finances. I have love and money. I have friends and money. And so and there were moments, I'm not going to lie, and I've talked about this in my creator confessions that March, March, April, May, in June, there was some moments where I disconnected and disassociated and some dark moments where I would, you know, binge on Netflix for a day, two, three days because I felt like, I mean, being fully honest, I felt so worthless in those moments. And I knew like, I knew I was letting in those moments, I was very conscious of, I knew I was letting certain external things get to me. And, and I would take a step into making a better choice with whatever capability I had in the moment. So instead of, for example, choosing a horror movie, I would choose a Hallmark movie. And, and you guys, those little shifts all matter. And, you know, and I kept praying. I did a 21 day financial fast with Epic Fab Girl in July. I also realized massively where my expectations were really, really, really low in certain things, in certain areas. And I realized that was an issue of worthiness. And that was an issue of, in a sense, like sometimes we protect ourselves by, our mind will protect ourselves by setting low expectations so that we don't get disappointed. But really what happens, we set low expectations. We don't quote unquote expect much. And then we're like, oh, we're so, so not disappointed. But then we're also close to the limitless possibilities. And I realized where I've shifted a lot with this the last several years, but I realized there was more. Like Candace Janae with Epic Fab Girl really challenged us on that. I think it was day 14. I listened to every single video. I didn't always show up live, full disclaimer, but I went back and listened to every single video on her YouTube channel on Epic Fab Girl, and you can too. And her 21-day fast also inspired me to create a 30-day challenge to create it via my YouTube channel, via my show, via the blog, via restreaming it live, via a tool called Restream, via emails, via social media, like that's coming up. So I refuse to back down. Like I may have moments where I fall down, but I always get back up. And that is the thing that I want you to, to really look on and reflect on is you are a human being and you are so, so loved and you are so, so precious. And allow yourself to be and to receive regardless of what you achieve externally.
Like that has been one of my greatest lessons in my life. I used to value myself solely on performance, on awards, on accolades, on promotions. And I believe, you know, a big part of this and my journey of transformation, you know, overall and with wealth has been to value myself as I am and as a human being, like as a child. And so that I also value you and others for simply being. You are not, your, your, your self-worth is not your net worth. The more we build up our character, our internal state, our faith, our hope, our love internally, our abundance, our, our focus on beliefs and a faith of abundance, of God gives us the power to create wealth, of the blessings of the Lord bring wealth and he brings no sorrow to it, of I am overflowing with love, abundance, and freedom if I am worthy of abundance in all forms, however you choose to frame that in the statements and the downloads that come to you, the more that starts to show up in our external state. And then it comes from a place of faith and abundance because it's the overflow. It's not from a state of lack of doubt, of fear, of disbelief, because what I realized in my patterns this year and in prior years, I would achieve external states, but because at my core, I didn't believe I was worthy, I would lose it. I wouldn't hold on to it. I wouldn't have it. I would give money and time and myself away to people and situations and investments that were not worthy of me that I wasn't meant to, to even do if I would have believed I was worthy at the time. So now as I'm recording this, uh, the last two months, so I was going to leave, oops, I was going to leave the end of May and go to Ecuador. Ecuador is still on my list. However, a really good friend of mine, and I talked about this on, I think, maybe the last episode or episodes before, a really good friend of mine, Silvana, they, her and her family were leaving to go to Bolivia for two months. And they, they're such great friends and they've helped me so much in the past. And I was also feeling called and aligned to experience the unconditional love of dogs. And their dogs, Tucker and Cooper, and I always bond whenever I see them and, you know, and go to their house or have, you know, events with their family or whatever the case is. And really, you know, they more so wanted help with the dogs because they couldn't find anybody to watch the dogs. And then, of course, you know, different things with the house, whether it was, you know, the sprinklers, the pool, things like that. And so when they, she asked me if I could help, it was like the timing was so divinely aligned. And I was like, yes. Like, yes, I will delay Ecuador or travel and travels for you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm feeling like this is so aligned in every way. And you guys, speaking back on worthiness, the unconditional love and the excitement and the cuddling with Tucker and Cooper fed my soul so much the last two months. I will definitely be getting a dog at some point and she is going to be named Faith. And she will definitely be small enough to travel with. I had been eyeballing the Shibu breed, mini Shibu females. Um, I'm releasing the timing. I'm not married to the timing. At first, I thought I would have her by the end of October or around my birthday. But I've released, you know, that and I'm open to perfectly aligned divine timing. But the time I spent with Tucker and Cooper was so priceless. And then when they returned from Bolivia about a week or so ago, and I got to spend a week with them before I left on August 1st. And it was such a blessing to see, you know, firsthand, like I've been around their family tons of times, but I think the most I ever stayed was like three, four days, or maybe like five days or something like that in the past, like around Christmas when I came in between travels. But now with their kids older, and me in a different state also, and them in a different state. It was such a blessing to spend the week, you know, interacting with their family and being around and seeing a healthy marriage and seeing, you know, a beautiful marriage of 18 plus years, um, seeing, you know, their kids thriving and being faith-based. 
and what that looks like and a safe and stable, you know, home with safe and stable communication and the ability to be free. And it was also such a blessing that, you know, their children asked me to play. Like uh, Isaac asked me to go down the mattress with them on the stairs, which I shared on my stories on Instagram. You can see it. And he told me I was too young to work because I was wearing this like onesie that's like a PJ slash loungewear. And he told me I looked like a preschooler and I completely like was like, oh my God, this is such a compliment because also scripture tells us be like little children. And I believe whether you believe in God or not, I believe the more we infuse joy into ourselves and our souls every single day, we live fuller and more unapologetic and free lives. And so that was such a blessing. Then he asked me to play baseball with him and like throw and catch with him. And then the kids asked me to like play dead man in the pool and um, laser tag like one night, like super, super fun, like so, so grateful. So um, pausing for a second, you're going to hear all about some retreats coming up and then I'll be back with talking about Playa del Carmen and shifting the shit to the shift and what's happening now. I'm coming in hot with fit and contentations and retreats, calling all my creators to CEOs, boss babes, and multi-passionate women entrepreneurs. If you are ready to experience the ultimate blend of a getaway or occasion with fitness, creativity, and relaxation, get ready because our fitcations, contentcations, and retreats are here to take you on a transformational journey. We've got a fitcation coming up September 10th through the 14th in Los Cabos. Join us for an adventure that combines fitness and a vacay like never before. From assessments to meal plans to chef experiences to workouts on the beach and by the pool and active adventures like our glass bottom boat kayaks, our fitcations will elevate your well being and leave you feeling transformed like never before. If that's not enough, or maybe you're looking for more, we've got a contentcation on the heels of the fitcation September 14th through the 17th in Los Cabos. If you are a content creator and you are looking to fuel your creativity, this is for you. Not only will you be on at Instagrammable locations with mastermind workshops with AI, chat GPT, templates and content, creating Instagram reels, scheduling out 15, 30 plus days of content across and during the retreat, you will be blown away. And let's not forget where the retreat is in Los Cabos with beachside vacation, beachside experiences, adventures, city tours, unleash your imagination, gain incredible perspectives and take your content creation to new levels to create it like a boss. Last but not least, because maybe you want to spend a lot more time in Los Cabos, we've got a retreat August 31st through September 7th, right before the two cations, where you can elevate your mind, spirit, body, and soul with our transformative retreat experiences. This retreat combines it all. It combines mindset, wellness, marketing, business, and travel along with the adventures. Our retreats provide space to relax, rejuvenate, and connect with incredible community. From empowering workshops to all-inclusive experiences to immersive activities, you will embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. Mention the podcast for 10% off when you complete the assessment at the link in bio and or fitlifecreation.com backslash retreats. And in the link in bio, you can find it via transformational retreats. And if you do any two of the experiences, you get a thousand dollars off friends. Yes. A thousand dollars off. So let's create it on occasion. 
So as I started to evaluate places to travel to, I released Ecuador and I started to evaluate where I wanted to travel to next in a completely different way. So if you go back and read on my blog, Lessons Learned from Traveling Full-Time 2020 through 2022 or listen to on the show, my intention and focus was very different than I was different and also the pandemic, you know, played into that as well. So As I had the space, you know, staying in Georgia and Atlanta a couple more months, I started to think about like what I truly desired even more and aligning to community, aligning to um, beautiful weather and climate and aligning to beaches started to land me literally in Mexico. I started to think about, you know, a digital nomad community. And as I was researching, I found that Playa del Carmen, which I had not stayed in yet, I visited two, three times, you know, a day here, two days here. Like when I stayed in Tulum for three months in 2021, I went here a couple of times. But what I didn't know at the time, and I wasn't looking for it then, was that they have an avid digital you know, nomad community. And I said, okay, well, I want to stay here at least a month and, you know, set then the already things in motion back in June, July for the vacations and the contentcations that you just heard about, you know, and the retreats with Los Cabos and taking a leap of faith on that again. And I've been connecting with Mexico Insider. I've been connecting with a diving community in Los Cabos as well. I got um, aligned to a diving collaboration there. And now as I arrived in Playa in Cancun on the 1st, I stayed at a place, an Airbnb via the Tulum Realtor. I shared about it on my Instagram and it's on a recent post that I did at their pool. I've stayed there in the past twice and I love their house. Um, I love their vibe. They're amazing. Uh, Andrea and uh, Victoria, they just had a beautiful baby boy. I love that they're close to the airport. I love that they have a pool. And what I didn't know is they just opened up a small little studio on the property. So that's where I stayed because at first I was going to go straight to Playa del Carmen. But in the spirit of space, in the spirit of flow, I said, wait a minute. If I do that, my flight lands at eight. I likely won't be on my way to Playa del Carmen till at least nine on a bus. Then I won't get there till like 1030. I'll be, you know, super tired. I won't have a lot of space for work. And the next day I'll probably wake up later. So instead I decided literally the day before, wait a minute, let me check their listings. Uh, The day before my flight, let me check their listings and see if they have space. And they did. And let me instead, you know, land go straight to their place, you know, get settled, go to sleep pretty, excuse me, pretty early, wake up the next morning early, crank out, you know, clear out several of my emails, uh, film a ton of content with uh, workouts, with dancing to Barbie music, you know, aligning and capitalizing on culture and what's happening with Barbie. I will be sharing a Barbie case study coming up on the blog and show. I already shared some things on the blog. You can definitely check that out. And um, filming things with Herbalife Nutrition, uh, reaching out to brands, you know, that had already partnered with Barbie to possibly partner with the Fitcations and Contentcations. I found a new incredible tool called Snoov, S-N-O-O-V dot I-O, to help with business to business outreach and, you know, ongoing payments with brands, sponsorships, influencer marketing and management and more. So I did that. So I woke up like six. I had my morning, you know, flow. I um, filmed several workouts and did my workouts and dances utilizing Barbie and then also longer form videos for my YouTube channel and um, cleared emails, used the tool Snoove to reach out to brands for the fitcations, contentcations and retreats. And, um, what did I do then? Ah, talk to family. Well, played in the pool, talk to family, and then cleared out the rest of my emails. And then also looked at and reviewed finances as well. So then yesterday I, um, like, so in the midst of that, I had planned originally to leave at one, but, um, some things took a little bit longer. So I ended up checking out at noon, but then I stayed on their property working at the pool till about two, then caught an Uber. Uber does work in Cancun, but not at the airport. So caught an Uber to the Adeo bus station. So it's the way that you would likely say in English is 
ADO, it's ADO, but in Spanish you say ADO. And it is um, the buses that you take within Mexico. Um, I think typically always in Yucatan, but I'm not sure on the other parts of Mexico because I didn't take them there yet. And, um, oh, side note, I do speak fluent Spanish for those of you that don't know. So I also love going to Latin countries because that gives me more chance to practice. And I really, really elevated and accelerated my Spanish, especially since most of the countries I visited in 2020 through 2022 were Latin countries. So en caso de que tú hablas español, podemos practicar. Y si tú quieres que yo uh, hace más, uh, co uh, más cosas como el podcast, en español también puedo. Entonces, uh, dígame en Instagram o algo. So I just said uh, in Spanish, if, you know, in case you speak Spanish and you want me to create more content in Spanish, let me know whether it's on a review on the show or whether it's on my Instagram or whatnot. So, so, um, and today I woke up in a beautiful Airbnb in Playa del Carmen and it is with the, let me make sure I get the name right. So I was searching for several Airbnbs. So one, I was pitching different brands and real estate, you know, in several different, uh, cities in, in, um, Mexico and different places. And then I f was also then thinking from both ends, like, let me reach out to different places. But then also when I reach out via Airbnbs, here's a couple things you likely definitely want to know on Airbnbs. When you stay for the week and or the month, many, many, many hosts have discounts, like even up to 30, 40, 50%. That is how I saved a ton before traveling and had discovered that when I would put in month date, you know, one month dates. And then some of them are also open to collaborations. Like I did that in Costa Rica. You can see that on my blog and on my show with the first place I stayed in in La Fortuna, like a gorgeous pink house, Dragonfly. And Shelly and the girls are amazing, and they are also on the show if you dig back through those episodes in 2021. And so the condo I landed on is via Gap Real Estate, and they're super nice. And we are also – so they are super host. They have over a 1,000 reviews on Instagram. I'm sorry, on Airbnb. <laughs> Instagram is on my mind. They have over a 1,000 reviews on Airbnb. It is a real estate company. It is a company founded by professional realtors. They are part of the USA NAR, National Association of Realtors, and the Mexican AMPI. I don't know what that stands for, but I'm assuming something with properties. They have focused on vacation rentals, and most of them are close to the beach and Fifth Avenue. And it is definitely, I haven't walked to the center yet from here because yesterday when I got off the bus, I took. Um, a taxi because, uh, you know, I, I do travel. Side note, I travel now with carry-ons only. I have a small carry-on for American tourister. My um, Smith, I think Swiss Army, not Smith, Swiss Army backpack and then a small Mickey Mouse purse for my mom. Um, at the same time, they're not – like especially my backpack, once I pack it up right now, is not light. And it, the bus station was only like a mile and a half away. So if – it wasn't for my luggage. I likely would have walked. Uh, definitely feel super safe. Um, but with the luggage, it was about $10 or so, just in case you're curious. And in Playa del Carmen and in Tulum, they do not have Uber. So some of the taxis do take uh, Airbnb. Uh, oh my goodness, Katrina. Some of the taxis do take credit cards. Um, so uh, back to Gap Real Estate. So those were one of the properties that I found. And initially we agreed, like, let me book a week. And then if I extend it to the month, they would definitely extend the monthly rate. At the same time, they are open to possible collaborations. And I, I mentioned that right off in a soft way on the Airbnb, like just to tell you what I said. And, you know, so it's very mindful to be very focused on them and not like ask that right away. And that goes to any brand pitch in any way, shape or form. I said, I love what you've created with your properties and Gap and your reviews and beautiful property. I traveled full time 2020 through 2022. And you can see my 80 plus positive reviews as well. I'm coming to play a month, maybe longer and curious as well. If you're looking for marketing director, blogs, email, social influencer marketing and open to collabs of any time. Um, I, I meant any kind, but I think Airbnb shifted it or maybe my mind shifted it, which is also entirely possible or positions looking for as well. Uh, let me know any all info and I'll be coming August 1st to the 29th at least and looking for places, et cetera. 
And they replied, thank you for your feedback. If you like the place, you can book. And when you're here, we can chat about your services. So some of you would take that as a negative or some of you, and I would have likely in the past, or that they are not interested and they just want you to book. And you guys, that is not the case. So you've got to keep in mind. So some of you may or may not know. If you've tuned in on the show, you definitely know. But if you're new to the show, you likely don't know. I have traveled to 36 countries. I was lit- literally born traveling. I was conceived in Bulgaria, born in Poland, in a refugee camp by the time I was six months old, and in the U.S. and four countries by the time I was two. And what I've learned early on and I continue to see is every culture is different and how people do business is different. For example, Central and Latin America, they use WhatsApp a lot for business. Like that is their go-to. So for us, if you think about that, that would be like using Instagram or WhatsApp, you know, instead of email versus the U.S. culture, it's more email and then video chat. But now, of course, DMs, Instagrams, et cetera. And also the other thing about uh, the Latin culture and many cultures, they like to wait till you're here um, because it's easier with time zones or meeting in person or forming a relationship. And then they also like to see also that you're serious, like you're actually coming because a lot of people say they're coming and then don't follow through. And so I was keeping all that in mind and I said, awesome, thanks for the response. How about possibly I book for a week and then you would be, would you be willing to either honor the monthly discount and block dates? And they have several properties and several condos in this building. And or we may figure out if you want to have me do some work and or collaborate, et cetera. I'm looking at a few more places, but we'll definitely let you know, et cetera. And they said, go ahead, you can book. So I said, awesome, I'll book until the 8th and I will look for info from you for check-in. I let them know my landing times and then holding the dates. And then I also speak fluent Spanish, copied my flight time and gave them my WhatsApp number. Um, And then they let me know on check-in, the guide, they gave me a whole bunch of details. Um, the access code, you can open your guide anytime if you have any questions. And in the meantime, I had WhatsApp and then we traded several messages and questions, you know, on typical stuff nearby, like gyms, vegan cafes, et cetera. If they have beach towels, like, you know, some basic stuff. And in the meantime, I also had their WhatsApp and I messaged them on WhatsApp and ended up connecting with a lovely, um, lady because at first I wasn't sure if their WhatsApp was also to connect because many also hosts do that. Um, or if it was also for business and I ended up connecting with a lovely lady named Fabiana that we connected on the business stuff and she was very transparent and honest. And she said, you know, the owner is really looking for, you know, B2B leads for the real estate for sales. Um, and I mentioned right away, like some of my experience with B2B outreach, the tools I use shared a specific blog post that goes to that. And then she, you know, mentioned the other stuff like is pretty well taken care of, but they might have some questions and stuff. And then she also like, and again, we traded a couple messages. So I'm just giving you guys the high points. She also mentioned that the, you know, director is, you know, busy the last couple of days. So he, like, she's going to send all the info and he or she may reach out in the next couple of days. So like to be patient, you know, um, and they would let me know. So, um, That's kind of like what's happening with me right now. I'm in Playa del Carmen the first day. This is my first full day in this Airbnb. And then I'm going to give you some insights of what my day is like and then go back to the shit and shifting the shit because that is also what we are here for for this episode, right? Um, Actually, let me flip-flop that. So no, no, no. Let me stay with that. So, um, today, you know, I woke up, I, my initial intention was to wake up at six, but I realized I was actually, my body was still super tired from travel. So I woke up about seven 30. I had my sacred seven morning routine, including writing in my passion planner. I just got an incredible, uh, notepad that it's, um, on Amazon and it's aligned and focused on also Herbalife. And it says today's going to be the best day ever. It has a wheel to assess like the different areas of life, appointments, to-do list, urgent and important, not urgent, but important. Um, my meals, notes, doodles, and one thing that I learned. So I completed that. I listened to some of my prayers and meditations on my phone and my voice. I completed my passion planner for the week. So some of you may be wondering, why am I repeating some of the things? Well, you guys, here's the thing. Our glorious, beautiful brains, especially as multi-passionate entrepreneurs, can go in 10 different directions in literally one minute or one hour. 
So in order to stay focused, and this has served me very, very well over and over in my life, I have learned that when I repeat things in some way, shape, or form three to four times, it solidifies and I end up aligning better and better in my actions and in my results. And I learned this in college when I used to, I figured out like when I studied stuff at least four times, I always got A's, always. And then I applied that in corporate and in different ways. And then again, the, the results would repeat themselves. So it's taken me some time to apply and learn this with, you know, personally and as an entrepreneur, but I am getting there. So I repeat it on the notepad, the passion planner. I also journal, uh, that's more like as I flow, but then I repeat it electronically in a notepad and outline the actions more specifically and detailed. And then I have it in my Google calendar. On top of that, I have ClickUp that I mentioned earlier, where I keep everything overarchingly, like my project plan, my CRM, my customer relationship management, my dashboard. On top of that, I have emails that I send myself with affirmations, with what's next on my growth and, um, with, uh, focal points and focus points that repeat what I have in ClickUp. So that's three to seven times that things are being repeated that I see, feel, look at them. Speaking of growth, this morning I listened to the It Takes Grit podcast by Rebecca Louise, and she is also in the Herbalife community, and I love what she's created with her own passions and purpose with wellness and wealth and being an author and having courses. So I really, really, really relate to her. Another person that I am listening to a lot, and I look at their social and I relate to them, and I feel like we are definitely like-minded from a uh, mental aspect as well, is Style Bell on Instagram. They are, just to give shouts out to they are Sir Style at Sir Style. And then Rebecca is at Rebecca Louise, L O U I S E Fitness. So you can check out them as well. You may relate to them. And then I have for today as well. After this, let's see, I wrote out like kind of the timing. I'm listening to B-School as far as learning goes as well. This is my third time listening to B-School. I am, I joined B-School when I was in Panama uh, and literally cried when I joined because I definitely felt a shift of worthiness. Listened to and applied twice last year, uh, last year into this year. And then, oh wait, is it the fourth time? Hold on. Oh, it's my fourth time going through because I did it twice last year and then I did it this um, January to February and now it's a fourth time. So it's a fourth time. And um, this episode and emails and then I'm going upstairs. So I'm taking a really, really like much lighter day. I'm going upstairs where they have Wi-Fi and a rooftop pool, which is one of the reasons why I picked this place. It was, you know, the condo, the comfort of the condo, balcony, so I could also film content, beautiful kitchen, beautiful like workspace, and then also rooftop with a pool, walking distance, and beaches close by. So with the last two days being super like hectic, both work content and movement wise, I intentionally set the pace for today to where it's like, hey, I'm at my Airbnb, then I'm going upstairs to the roof to swim and work, you know, and work out and also work because again, they have great Wi-Fi. Uh, work on my blog, uh, schedule some emails, and um, check up on Airbnb experiences. I submitted two. Well, I have three Airbnb experiences listed, but I've noticed that in Mexico, they're a lot more popular. So I want to reset them or reallocate them if possible, the ones I have existing to Mexico. Um, and I sent in a support ticket and had some challenges with people not reading at all. Um, so I'm hoping it's an easy fix cause I could change everything, but the location myself. Um, if not likely I will have to submit new ones and just copy the three, which is fine. First world problems. Um, I am giving a presentation next week with bakery cowork again and girl mob this time. So they have four different brands. So if you've been following me on Instagram and, or, um, my stories um, and or the emails you likely saw or my link in bio had this too for like a week or so. I did a presentation on Pitching Perfect and focused in on investors and all my experience with investors that spanned years from platforms like F6S.com, Gus.com, 
uh, literally creating financials and performance for brands, getting them six to eight figure results from startups to established brands like any lab test now was one of my clients years ago to helping companies go public as a chief audit executive and being the financial expert on boards and working with private equity firms and more. So that's part of my, I joke, but not joke, my 10,000 lives experiences. And, um, so I'm revising that presentation and it's super easy to revise because I'm just changing the title to fun funding and the cover and then also the logos. So that shouldn't take long at all. Um, I also, speaking of shifts, I shifted to stop with a VA service that I was using FSI and they're great. I definitely recommend them. They're on my 75 plus tools. I've used them for two plus years. I may use them again. However, what I was feeling in my spirit was God saying, okay, shift. You have changed so many ways of how you're doing things that are more efficient with AI, with IO, with chat GPT tools. Take a pause, regroup on what you're scaling next to VAs because the five-step process looks different and then um, do it again. And then my favorite VA has been Sonia and she went off on her own. So I let her know like, hey, I will be reaching out to you this month. Um, so that will happen. And then, you know, I'm, that's part of what I am shifting to scale again. And then, um, so I'll be working on the roof till about four. Um, so after I revise that presentation, I'll be clearing emails again, um, look, uh, reaching out to brands again via the tool snoove I mentioned. So you may definitely want to check out the blog and the episode on five steps to launch your business like a boss, because I talk a lot about IO tools there. So I was using Apollo, but now due to technical issues and service issues, I shifted to snoove. And um, then I will be going to the beach. The beaches, there's several beaches walking distance from here. I also discovered some nutrition clubs with Herbalife close by. So I will go visit. And then I made a note for videos that I will want to film in this Airbnb. Um, so that is kind of like what's happening now. Now let's go back to shifting the shit. So I mentioned, you know, kind of directly, indirectly that certain things I noticed about my worthiness, about my wealth, about believing I'm worthy of it all, of like what is in my spirit, soul, mind, and heart. And what I realized was one, my faith gets to elevate. Two, I realized back to my phrase, divine discipline. And discipline truly is the greatest form of self-love. And I realized, you guys, how much I was doing a disservice to myself, any of those moments or those days that I disassociated and feeding into and buying into the I'm not worthy and perpetuating the cycle. And so I realized the only way to shift out of that was to A, adjust my hormones to, well, A, decide. B, adjust my hormones, which I talked about on a recent hormones of its, uh, recent hormones, good Lord, a recent episode and blog post of it's getting hot in here and talking about all that and um, also increasing my discipline. And that was one of the reasons why I also chose a place with beautiful vibes and beaches and some, you know, the eternal summer because I knew that was going to help. And two of the incredible books I have read recently um, is The Worthy Project by Meadow DeVore. And I am right now listening to her book, The Worthy Mind. So you can see how I recognized, you know, something that I get to grow in and then took the aligned action to start to shift it. And I recently also finished Believe For It by CC Winans. And then I am now almost done with 100 Days of Believing B Bigger by Marshawn Evans Daniels, uh, because that's a daily book. And then I am right now, in addition to The Worthy Mind, I am reading and listening to Cultivating an Unshakable Character by Jim Rohn. So you can see how I took those disassociated times, hours, misalignment, and intentionally realigned it to start to shift the shit and create new neural pathways, new mindsets, new feelings, and new actions. And that is already exponentially showing up. And it already was before I came to Mexico. It was already exponentially showing up in July. Like I noticed in July, I had a lot less down days and a lot more exponential action, which I will be talking about in the July confessions episodes coming up. I, um, also 
reflected and realized, you know, how that was showing up in my wealth and the accelerated action to take, you know, in the business to business proposals, in the aligned type of roles. And then speaking of B-School, one of the fun sheets I did yesterday, and again, I'm doing this for the fourth time. So recognize, you know, the mother of, what is it? The mother of growth is repetition or the mother of all repetition is growth. So in her lesson two, in your profit picture fun sheet, which I love, one of the things she has you do is your money tracker, both from an existing and future aspect and really honing in on like what that looks like. And I realized, okay, let me like, which I have been focusing in on fractional CMO with influencer management and a price point, you know, of starting at about 7,000 and focusing on getting four clients in that then influencer management with brands and creators. And interestingly enough, I haven't launched that, I think since last month or the month before. And interestingly enough, I got an inquiry yesterday from Crystal, which I'm super excited about, and focusing on at least four in that area. And the reason why three to four is triggering me is because I want to go through three to four and then scale with basically creating and crafting that into a marketplace where I invite other potential fractional CMOs or other influencer managers, and then they can make money. Then three, which has been one of my focuses right now, is content done for you um, alongside with contentcations and retreats, meaning as I'm launching contentcations and retreats and for people to come, you know, and fitcations to come to those, at the same time, I am pitching brands and creators that and CEOs that want content done for you. And then I get to create incredible content with teams and community for their brands at these amazing destinations. Um, you know, and estimates on that is about 34% of revenue within three plus months. And then the creator to CEO videos, I've already started to film and aligning those to the create monthly. And all of that aligns and integrates tips, tools, and tech from wellness to wealth to business. So that has additional income streams and goals with it too. And last but not least, I mentioned this a bit earlier is created events. So as I'm listing, you know, with these Airbnb, with Airbnb experiences, as I want to potentially partner with Nest Coworking and Playa del Carmen, that I am going to connect with them, you know, next week. And then, you know, what that looks like. So you can see how it starts from a larger revenue scale, like B2B, business to business and brands and working with brands on, you know, different angles as a CMO or with influencer marketing and management or having brand sponsor ongoing retainers. Two is still content, so it feeds off of the previous ones, but now also integrates with live experiences. Three is all of that into the monthly experiences with creator to CEO and create it monthly and also transformation toolkits. And then last but not least, that then takes that and the previous contentcations and fitcations and retreats into smaller bite-sized events, especially now that the pandemic and all has shifted. And along those lines, uh, different things with uh, giving back. And you can see now how me saying no to other things that I've talked about in recent episodes and shifting the shit, you know, they weren't necessarily bad, but we're taking up my time, whether it was faith-based communities, whether it was, you know, business communities that, you know, fully didn't align or value have now created so much space. And then I'm going through the rest of that fun sheet. So I'm shifting the shit by dramatically increasing decisions, desires, and discipline. So this has probably been one of my longest episodes ever, um, and it is halftime. I would love to hear, well, the episode's ending, but it's halftime for all of us, our ish, right? Because it's August. I would love to hear how you're, how you're celebrate, how you're, you know, uh, what your halftime looks like, how you're assessing your faith, your vision, your actions, your progress, what you're celebrating and how you're shifting the shit for the rest of the year. And leave a review on the show so I can also shout you out. It also helps other people tune in to create it like a boss. And as always, friends, remember, create, transform, and inspire because you are born to. Chats on faith, wellness, money, marketing, business, and travel. So you create a life if you and business haven't already. Head on over to the blog, the podcast, and the freebies to jumpstart your transformation. If you're ready to 
dive into the online courses, the live events, or the retreat. And if you want to create with our community on an even deeper level, definitely check out our internships, our influencer collaborations, management, and brand engagement. Let's create it.